Hello, this is um, my Versi Helios organ, which was um, very generously donated to me by Versi King, um, John Kiffin, in other words. He's got a number of these, kit built organs as they were back in 1977, and he, he let me have this one. And there's been a number of faults on it, uh, only small minor faults, which most of which we, we've fixed now. Um, Mark Fuller being the engineer, um, I'm just the player. Um, now one of the last faults we've got to fix is an, an intermittent one. Now that everything's fine with the organ sounds. The, the problem is on the piano section. Now these organs were kit built, um, the, so you could buy them as a kit but back in the 1970s or you could buy them ready built. If they were ready built they were about £9,000 then. About £2,000 to buy them as a kit form. And it was a hobby organist, a sort of hobby electronics, Maplin type of thing, you know. And um, so some were better built than others. This one was very well built, it's wonderful inside. I mean I'm not an electronics expert as I've already said, but it looks very neat to me. But this particular fault involves the piano section. All the notes play properly. Let me just turn off the draw bars just so we can hear the piano. Everything's fine until we get to that B that B note and that and the one next to it. Uh, there, it sounds like it's playing two notes together. Hello. Right. Into a nice bit of. Vintage electronics here. Oh, smells wonderful. Uh, the key was what? A B? That's and a B one. flat? Those two? Yeah, those are the ones. Okay, I'm just going to put a little sticker underneath so that when I've got that up, I know which key I'm messing about with. Mm. Some, for some reason that's triggering even when you hit the keys next to it. Right, okay. All the little chips fortunately are just pushed into chip holders. There you go, fixed it. Give me your money. <laughs> yes, but right. we, know, we know it's going to eventually no. go back to its old self. As I'm putting force on that board there, that's working. And the B flat or A sharp is working as well. Take off the force. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh, back. Right, that could be a, something nice and simple. Uh, something's connecting, pushing, uh, pushing against another component, two components touching. Like you say, these were all handmade. Uh, and people who were brave enough would sit down and solder these together, each board, all the, the boards are numbered, and then eventually put the whole thing together themselves. But, uh, you know, obviously with this much electronics, unless you're an absolute expert, I mean, even I couldn't make it this neat. You know, this is, this is really, this is nice. This is, this is very nice. But, uh, right, we're gonna have a look into here see if we can take this board off because this is where the problem seems to be between these two keys. <laughs> oh, thankfully I'm working indoors today, not out there. Everything's so tightly put together I'm going to have to unscrew all these boards and just pull them forward towards me. We've taken out all the screws of this top board here so we're going to have a little look around the back there. Obviously it's switched off because there's uh, mainly this whole thing is 15 volts plus 15 volts minus. Uh, just have a quick look around here. I could do with a new set of eyes. Uh, just checking that everything's nicely soldered down and there's no cracks in the actual board. We're just going to have a nice touch around with some proper lead solder. 
Oh. I think this is illegal nowadays. The manufacturer's name is written in hieroglyphics on it, is it? Don't okay. tell the green police. This is lead solder. Oh dear. <laughs> well, we can do without them lot. All right. I'm just going to touch all these nice little tracks in here. Make the contacts. Look at that smoke. Beautiful. Oh, smells lovely. I'll probably end up with brain damage or, or God knows what. Right, this is where the microchip is. And there's a couple of little bobbles. And uh, sorry, I need my little magic eye again. One moment. Where was that other piece? Whether this was one of the um, home hand built ones, and we don't know, do we? Because it's been very well this made. Look, this looks possibly. I mean, some of the uh, older guys out there will understand what a dry joint is, and some of these contacts here do look slightly dry jointed. So I'm just going to touch them in and refresh them. I'm going to just slide that back into place and see what happens. But these little springs are all, all going to need pulling back into place before this is screwed down. A lot of the parts in here are standard parts. I mean there's hardly, I don't think there's anything that's special in here apart from the the PCB boards. Mm. All the components are bog standard off the shelf components. I mean, there'll be a little bit of programming somewhere. Uh, I think I noticed a few EEPROMs in there. Yeah. Everything's fine, hopefully, again. I thought it might have been the chip. The chip's very easily replaceable. It's only a 7408, which is four AND gates or something like that. And they're just, uh, as Dave in Australia would say, they're just jelly beans, jelly bean chips. Easy to replace, nothing special. Which a lot of this uh, keyboard is the same. A lot of the bits and pieces, you can buy them still, replace bits and pieces here, there and everywhere. Unfortunately, you always have to keep ahead of them. We've been in this several times, you know, something's fixed and then the next problem comes along, something else dies. But it's a great machine to keep it going. So, we're going to have a look around all the boards now, before I put it all back together. Right, now for a quick look inside this beastie. There's the power supplies down there. Nice big heat sinks, two and three, five, five. There's a five volt regulator and a 12 volt regulator. No, sorry, correction. Minus 15, plus 15. Okay, we can live with that. Now we're gonna get this section down, nice and carefully, and move on to the next. Very nice how this all slots together. Does that key still work? Sounds good to me. This is your early memory. This has got lots of uh, EEPROMs on there. That's for the sound computer. For the sound computer, yeah. Uh, it's the memory board for the sound computer, which is all this business here. So you can do lots of little settings and it will load into these little EEPROMs here and you can sort of jump from thing to thing so as to speak there's a couple of little copy buttons on here i'm not going to press anything just in case and god knows all this gobbledygooky stuff lots of uh, german language and things because there's he is german after all and all these beautiful Miles and miles of boards and cables and oh my lord, there's so much in it. It's wonderful. That's the keying, uh, keying matrix? This is all the keying matrix, yeah. Somebody told me that later on, a few years later, um, the, they used to have plug-in ones. Yeah. Um, so you could take the cards out, the boards out. 
all this lot now will be usually sit in the back of your digital watch. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna move on to the next section. I'll just lower this back down. And this has got all your drawbars. Are you allowed to use the word drawbars now? Or will Hammond come banging at my door with the handout? <laughs> well, you, we'll use, we'll call them drawbars, they won't call drawbars. I'm going to call it drawbars. So, Hammond, if you've got my address, you can come and sue me later. Can we have some light, please? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Right. Oh, my. Looks like the telephone exchange in there. Very interesting stuff. Now we have had a problem on this this board here where there's a little fuse. Instead of using a proper fuse they actually use a resistor as a fuse. And as you can see it's burnt out a few times and what we've temporarily had to do is take out one of the boards. I can't even see where the board's gone. It was, um... it, it was in there somewhere. Ah, there we go. We've actually taken out the board that sits here temporarily because that's still under repair by me and I've just got to get hold of a, a chip to fix it. That's the board for the um, rhythm unit isn't it? The that's all the rhythms, yeah. The Versimatic 2. Is it the Versimatic 2? Yeah. Excellent. Down there, if you can see in the dark, there you go, this is your audio outputs and you've got a bass, middle and treble control on both of those, one for your left channel and one for your right. Uh, and then all this wonderful switch work up here. Those are the special effects section there. It's already special effects board. And it had the the EF2 with the later ones with the brass on. And the a good old things. spring reverb. If you bang it hard enough, will it work? No, spring reverb's <laughs> not on. Goes off like a thunderstorm when it wants to. Well, that basically, if we can pull the lid down now. Right. Okay, let's just get your my hands free. Oh, we've got to screw these back in. Okay. Because otherwise it'll come down with a thump on the lower section. These yeah. are the hardest bits to get hold of, these lugs actually, of all the parts on the organ, so I believe. Are they? Yeah. Okay, let's get this lid down then. Pull those cables to what? Oh, that metal bit. That the metal hinge. Towards. That's yeah, it. That hinge needs to come out, yeah. doesn't it? That's it. Right. Okay. And then. Right. Those lights lift, look nice, don't they? Lift. Lift it up, Jay. Oh, right, because of the switches. Right. Okay. Yes, and this has been retrofitted with some rather nice amber LED lighting. Which you can just buy on a nice sticky strip and put in there yourself. So, if Jason now gives us just a little play oh, right, let's on the piano, just, the piano just to make sure the piano works. Play us out on the organ then. Okay then. And then we'll right, end this. So. Let's get the old drum box going. Before everyone gets too bored.